Hey, hey, how's it going? My name is Jake Way, and I'm the producer of iShowerMank here for Hospital Chair Talk number two. We're going to go over our competition with Project Zomboid and I'm uh, going to give some responses to Alzar, uh, who had a lot of, who had a lot of comments about different aspects of the game that we, we should and should not have. Um, and because I often go off in tangents, I'll probably touch on all kinds of other stuff. Um, first things first, Alzar, thank you so much for your comments. A lot of the stuff we we disagree with, but the amount of time it took for you guys to put to really care about ISR and type in all this stuff for us to read, I really appreciate it. It was really cool of you to do that. Um, the uh, first thing is we're going to talk about the day and night cycle. The day and night cycle is something we've actually we've we've done, and I think we've done very well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, our programmer Eugene Udreth, um hey Eugene, you did a great job. Thank you for this. Um, has a little clock on the a little clock on the side, and then the day um, slowly changes according to time, and then in the daytime is beautiful. We got to see the falling leaves. This um, zombie is a little bit more pa a little more passive. Not as many of them. And then night comes and it's slow, but when night does come, it, it can become like dark, so like a darkest, darkest black, and you can't see anything without having some source of, source of light, and it's, it's perfect. And also, uh, we've uh, corresponded, um, like a little more tranquil music for the day is like a relief, and then at night it's like the you know that old school like horror movie horror movie type music, but with a little more modern flair. Um, so I'm very happy with our day night cycle. Glad you brought it up. It's something we 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 like to people know about because it's like we do a good job. Um, thing uh, we don't have, and which I wish we did, was that eating, drinking, fresh water. That's something I I, I saw that was done very well in the game called Dead Frontier. It's an online MMORPG. I think that's an acronym. Um, they did very well. But what what uh what I noticed though is if it's not done really really well, it can just kind of become a hassle rather than something fun. Um, it's really it's when you have to do the whole survival aspect. Of, that's something I really like to explore for ISR. But we're not at a point yet where we can really do it well because we have so we have so many other things we have to like learn to do right first. This is our first game, so we, we're doing a lot of stuff right. Um, but we need to we definitely need to like learn and see what we have what works what people like so before we can explore new things. Because you brought this, I'm definitely I'm writing this down. We're gonna we're definitely gonna consider it. Right now, the extent for water is uh. It re replenishes your stamina. Like if you run real hard, your character's stamina goes um, bar goes down. In doing so, he gets more endurance. Um, but when he gets to, like super super low, like it takes a really long time for him to regain stamina. If you drink a bottle of water, it'll uh, it'll speed it up a little bit quicker. Um, that's about the extent we have for water, unless it's like a special mission, like you can go out and get some water for somebody. That's about as much as we have. Um, I think we're definitely going to consider that. Next thing you brought up was the open world. Open world we don't have as much as big as I liked. Um, the the open open world sandbox survival is like is like the perfect is the perfect zombie game um, because of our resources and we're going to we're not able to do it as, as much as I'd like. But as ISR picks up and we have more fans, we have some sales. We're every like every time we push out a new release, the world's going to get bigger and bigger. Right now, it's it's already pretty it's pretty big. There's a lot of gameplay in it. Um, the map in that you, it's going to be the first release is as big as somebody can walk and run without getting sick. Of the game um, I played like on Dead Frontier. The reason why I didn't like Dead Frontier was they had this huge, awesome open map, but there weren't any vehicles, and so you had to like press the W key for days just trying to get to the next side and like some jerk zombie. It's trying to like and all you're trying to do is like sell some weapons or something. And, it was a pain. Um, so when we have the first thing we're gonna do is, is make the vehicles work. We have tanks. All the will these jeeps will work. Everything like any see a car in the city, you're gonna be able to get into it and, and drive away. Um, as soon as we have that, we'll really be able to open up the map. Have like highways, bridges. It'd be really really cool. Um, it's coming. Just um, please be patient. Next thing is. Um, the type of zombies, like I in my last video I talked about why we have different zombie types. It's really important for us to. It is real. It's a really efficient way for us to um, make a. It's really efficient way for us to make more content that's unique for the game. It's hard for us to make a completely new thing as much as I like, but like each thing you create, everything that's really new. It's not. It takes it takes money, and it takes money to to test it, and it's hard to do that. So one thing I do is. 
Um, one of the things we've done is create unique, um, different zombie types. Cause it's easy to do. We have we have basically one basic zombie, and then if we want to make a new one, we change the animation. We put a different we put different artwork in, and we just start changing numbers, the speed, how much he can attack, how much he hit. Like there's um all those things, all those changes are just numbers, and it's really easy for us to take to take one and just make a whole bunch of other different zombies off of it. And it's 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 just it's just really efficient, and it's added a lot of great stuff in the game. I'm sorry it's not what you're looking for, but uh, please still try the next release and let us know what you think about that. We'd love your feedback. Um, and then you talked a lot about Project Zomboid. This is where I'm going to get into our competition with Project Zomboid. Project Zomboid, everybody, we are not competing with them. We do not consider ourselves a competitor of Project Zomboid. Um, but why? Like, you guys are both zombie games. It's just like, there's a... Um, there's, think about how many World War II games are out there. There's tons of World War II games. There's probably, there's more World War II games out there that are successful than all zombie games combined. Like, um, so when pe people get worried, real loss, of, oh, this looks like this game, this looks like, oh, this looks like this game. Guys, we all build off of each other. We, I see one idea, I see an idea in this, I get those ideas, I synthesize them in mine. We all build off each other. That's how, that's how it is. Um, like, today, creative, a lot of, Creativity that sparks today is out of synthesis, rather than having that pure original idea. Um, the pure original core of I Shall Remain remains definitely intact. It's very important for me to have that. It has the, uh, it has the key themes of military leadership and bringing people and people coming together and displaying their strengths, their liabilities in a time of crisis. That's really important for me to have in ISR. So, and I, I started, um when I talk about the story, it's very. I don't actually consider it much of a zombie story as more as a people story. You have these two, um, you have these two people who are trying to get, stay, remain in charge of the sanctu of sanctuary, which is the, the safe haven where all the survivors are. You have this um, Jewish paranatologist who came out of um, came out of Europe, um, who's you know wise. He's pretty humble. Um, he has a liability, which you'll see in the in the next episode. Then you have this you know this firm, this just, this ambitious uh, former. Um, Bureau investigator, and they both, they both um, think they need to be in charge, and there's a conflict, and your main character Michael is stuck between them, and it's, it's an interesting depiction of how people really are in time of crisis. All of us would like this. Every every one of us, when we when we think of these crises that are happening, like we say, oh, if that happened, I would do this. You know, you know what? Nobody you can never say that. It happens up happens all the time in Marine, in the Marine Corps. Um, you meet another Marine, it's like. Oh, if I was there and I did, I would have done this and said, you know what, buddy, you actually would, you actually don't know. You can say, you can say this instead is, and I, this is the answer I respect more is, okay, if there was that burning car, I would like to think that I would run to that and just like just start punching the window and just getting and getting that person out. But you don't know you're gonna do that until you're actually presented with this situation. But with if you constantly tell yourself, you know, this is the kind of person I am, this is the character I represent, when that, when that situation happens you're more likely to do that because you've just you've ingrained that in yourself you've developed your character in that way um so so this is where isr comes in is where it's very important for me to tell a story that's accurate depiction of how people really are in times of crisis there's not like that that uh the, that huge like there's not that huge like heroic victor type Flawless personality, like there's not that, you know. Everybody, every one of us has something wrong with us that we try to build, we try to develop, you know. At the same time, we're hiding. Um, and how does it affect us when we make good, you know, do we make bad decisions, good decisions in times of crisis? So that's where ISR. That's the, I think that's the core originality of ISR. And then it's in the theme of zombies, and that's where, you know, it's a zombie game. Um, let's see. Now for Project Zomboid. I want them to keep doing what they do. I'm a little ticked at some of their fans. Um, Project Zomboid fans, I'm a little angry at you. Um, some of you were really mean when we first started and came over and gave us a bunch of 1 out of 10 ratings. Without e I can I can see if you guys play the game. It's really, like, when you see somebody give a 1 out of 10 and say this game is crap, and the only other game they've played on Desura is Project Zomboid, that reflects poorly on your community of Project Zomboid fans because... None, none of the pro, no, like as a whole, Project Zomboid community is awesome. They're really great people. They're passionate. It's it's unbecoming of the community, the character community that I present. So don't do that, guys. It sucks. And our game is not a one out of ten. It's right now it's an eight out of ten. Um, I think it would have been. I think it would be about a nine, 
or an eight and a half or so, somewhere in there, if there weren't all those one, one out of ten comments from those angry Project Zomboid guys who, who were worried who were worried that we are going to take away their thunder here on this sort Guys, we're not going to take away anything from from Project Zomboid. Like, those guys are great. They, they have unique stuff. And actually, when they have something really unique um, in the game, I make I make a point of it to not put in mind. One thing in my, in my game that I wanted to have, like, this really complex way of building stuff, but because I uh, because of um, Project Zomboid already has that, um, I'm going to create something different. So when um, somebody wants, so when somebody wants a really like buildy type sandbox, they're going to go look, they're going to go over to um, Project Zomboid. They can have that. I'm not going to take that away from them. And then when they come to ISR, we have this, you know, I'm talking, I'm starting to talk about people. Um, so we're very, we're very different. And I hope that uh, I can, you know. I'm gonna, like I said in my last one, I'm gonna reach out to their developers and you know try to build a relationship because you know, we really look up to them. They're doing, they're, they've accomplished a lot, and they're at a point now where I want to get to. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn from them.